Mars may be an awfully windy place, it turns out. After spending a year and a half on the red planet, the Perseverance rover has started to fall prey to the rough and tough environment of Mars. Recently, one of its sensors got hit by a pebble and damaged it. And the worst part? No one can go up there and repair it. So how bad is it actually? And could it mean that the Percy is out of order completely? Let's find out. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about the damage of one of Perseverance's wind sensors and whether the rover is still good to go or not. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. During its first couple hundred days in Jezero Crater, NASA's Perseverance Mars rover saw some of the most intense dust activity ever witnessed by a mission sent to the red planet's surface. Not only did the rover detect hundreds of dust-bearing whirlwinds called dust devils, but Perseverance also captured the first video ever recorded of wind gusts lifting a massive Martian dust cloud. A paper recently published in Science Advances chronicles the trove of weather phenomena observed in the first 216 Martian days or SOLs. The new findings enable scientists to better understand dust processes on Mars and contribute to a body of knowledge that could one day help them predict the dust storms that Mars is famous for and that pose a threat to future robotic and human explorers. Every time we land in a new place on Mars, it's an opportunity to better understand the planet's weather," said the paper's lead author, Claire Newman of Aeolus Research, a research company focused on planetary atmospheres. She added, there may be more exciting weather on the way. We had a regional dust storm right on top of us in January, but we're still in the middle of dust season, so we're very likely to see more dust storms. Perseverance made these observations primarily with the rover's cameras and a suite of sensors belonging to the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer, MEDA, a science instrument led by Spain's Centro de Astrobiologica in collaboration with the Finnish Meteorological Institute and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. MEDA includes wind sensors light sensors that can detect whirlwinds as they scatter sunlight around the rover, and a sky-facing camera for capturing images of dust and clouds. Jezero Crater may be in one of the most active sources of dust on the planet, said Manuel de la Torre Juarez, Meta's deputy principal investigator at JPL. Everything new we learn about dust will be helpful for future missions. So, the Perseverance rover touched down on the red planet in February 2021, carrying, among other instruments, a weather station dubbed Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer Meta. The instrument includes two wind sensors that measure speed and direction, among several other sensors that provide weather metrics such as humidity, radiation, and air temperature. Since the red planet has a very harsh environment, the International Space Agency faces various issues that affect its efficiency. Although this is the case, the Perseverance rover can still send essential information, as well as images of the Mars planes. But this time, NASA's space vehicle suffered a little serious damage after its Meta sensor got hit by some rocks. However, the good news is Meta is still working, since only one of its sensors was damaged. According to the latest report, Despite getting hit by some Martian pebbles, Meta's principal investigator, Jose Antonio Rodriguez, said that NASA can still use the equipment. Right now, the sensor is diminished in its capabilities, but it still provides speed and direction magnitudes. The whole team is now retuning the retrieval procedure to get more accuracy from the undamaged detector readings, he explained. Rodriguez added that they weren't able to predict the strong winds that led to the meta damage, although they already have experience in this kind of scenario. Adding to this, he even jokingly said that it's ironic that the wind sensor was damaged by wind. As of writing, NASA is still checking the overall damage caused by the Mars rocks. So, how strong is Mars wind? According to the research done, scientists have explained that Mars has a thin atmosphere compared to Earth, 
Because of this, the red planet usually experiences strong gusts of wind. Therefore, experts estimated that Mars usually has winds moving at around 16 to 32 kilometers per hour. This speed is already the same as a car driving on an open road. Now, imagine that you get hit by a rock carried by the wind at 32 kilometers per hour. That would be pretty terrible, of course. In addition to Red Planet's ferocious wind, another evil that lurks there are the frequent whirlwinds. The study authors found that at least four whirlwinds pass perseverance on a typical Martian day, and that more than one per hour passes by during a peak hour-long period just after noon. The rover's cameras also documented three occasions in which wind gusts lifted large dust clouds, something that scientists call gust-lifting events. The biggest of these created a massive cloud covering 1.5 square miles. The paper estimated that these wind gusts may collectively lift as much or more dust as the whirlwinds that far outnumber them. We think these gust liftings are infrequent but could be responsible for a large fraction of the background dust that hovers all the time in the Martian atmosphere," Newman said. So, why is Jezero different? While the Perseverance and other rovers have not discovered much about Mars, they are already naming the Jezero crater different from the rest of the planet. Although wind and dust are prevalent all over Mars, what the researchers are finding seems to set Jezero apart. This greater activity may be linked to the crater being near what Newman describes as dust storm track that runs north to south across the planet, often lifting dust during the dust storm season. Newman added that the greater activity in Jezero could be due to factors such as the roughness of its surface, which can make it easier for the wind to lift dust. That could be one explanation why NASA's InSight lander in Elysium Planitia, about 2,145 miles away from Jezero Crater, is still waiting for a whirlwind to clear its dust-laden solar panels, while Perseverance has already measured nearby surface dust removal by several passing whirlwinds. The Perseverance is nuclear-powered, but if we had solar panels instead, we probably wouldn't have to worry about dust buildup, Newman said. There's generally just more dust lifting in Jezero Crater, though average wind speeds are lower there and peak wind speeds and whirlwind activity are comparable to Elysium Planitia. In fact, Jezero's dust lifting has been more intense than the team would have wanted, as the sand carried in whirlwinds damaged Meta's two wind sensors. The team suspects the sand grains harmed the thin wiring on the wind sensors, which stick out from Perseverance's mast. These sensors are particularly vulnerable because they must remain exposed to the wind in order to measure it correctly. Sand grains blown in the wind and likely carried in whirlwinds also damage one of the Curiosity rover's wind sensors previously, and Curiosity's other wind sensor was damaged by debris churned up during its landing in Gale Crater. Therefore, with Curiosity's damage in mind, the Perseverance team provided an additional protective coating to Meta's wires. Yet, Jezro's weather still got the better of them. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.